transportation has saved us time, money, and sanity. You've probably heard people talk about the benefits of toy rotation, and today I'm sharing a complete guide from what it is, how to do it, what age to start, toy storage solutions, and our personal system, plus whether or not it is Montessori aligned. This video is part of a larger, realistic Montessori at home series. Definitely make sure to go back, check out those videos. If you guys are new here, my name is Rachel from the Confused Millennial. Welcome to my channel. I will also share tips for multiple play areas in the home and small spaces. Toy rotation is exactly what it sounds like. It is when you store a portion of your child's toys away so they only have access to a limited amount of them at a time. The benefits of toy rotation are really endless. It can encourage a deeper level of concentration and fostering independence in kids which sets themselves up for success a little bit more with independent play which I will leave a link to that whole video in the description box below. It also increases creativity and develops respect for personal belongings. Because there's fewer items out, it can also reduce stress and overwhelm. Kind of like when you walk into your house and it's a mess and your nervous system shocked, you get to avoid all of that with toy rotation. For parents, as an added benefit, it really does save money and time. We have bought way fewer items knowing that only five to 10 will be out at any given time. And and we also don't have to clean up a playroom that has 50 different things in it. I really cannot stress the benefits of toy rotation enough. It benefits not only the child, but the parents. So it is a total win-win. Toy rotation aligns with Dr. Maria Montessori's findings and observations that children with a calm, decluttered, and organized space often engaged with the items in that space for longer periods of time. Thus, it increased their overall concentration and fostered a greater sense of independence and responsibility for their personal belongings. Toy rotation has really been a Montessori at home compliment to Dr. Maria Montessori's findings and not something that she actually ever wrote about or talked about. What age should you start doing toy rotation? Really, this depends on you. The sooner the better. It's definitely easier to start implementing when you have a newborn or while you're pregnant. Currently pregnant with baby number two. We started this when I was pregnant with our first. We have stuck things I'm going to share with you in this video since the beginning and they have really worked for us. But you can start it at any age and of course there's always other ways to adapt and do things that make the most sense for you and your family. Starting from the beginning gives you a chance to control the amount of items that you are allowing into your home from the get-go. If you start rotating toys later on, be prepared to have to go through a decluttering phase and having a conversation with your child. Because your child previously had access to all of their toys, they may ask, where are my toys? So what's going on? So be prepared to talk about why your toys are being stored away, when toy rotation day is, and any other questions that may come up. I know a lot of people will consider what we did in poor taste, but it really worked for us. And I just want to throw it out there in case anyone else wants to do it. When I was pregnant, we knew we'd be moving about a month after the baby was born. Essentially what we did was we asked our friends and family to stick to our minimalist baby registry. If they wanted to make a rogue purchase, that was totally okay. We just asked that they sent us a photo beforehand so we could give it the thumbs up or thumbs down. And if they didn't do that and we didn't want the item, they would be responsible for returning it because there was no way I was about to go on a returning spree with a newborn and a new house and packing and moving and unpacking and all of that and recovering from having a baby. No, thank you. One of the best and most kind gifts that people could give us at that time was respect and understanding and not only our wishes, but just where we were at in this major transitional phase of our life. And the best thing they could give us was more time back and less stress. Use those little kind of tips and languaging hacks to talk to your family, talk to your friends if you feel called, if that sounds right for you. I have talked about this before in my Love Every Play Kit reviews, but we started getting our Love Every Play Kits before my daughter was even born. The decision fatigue of a new parent is a lot from choosing diaper brands, clothes, all the different things that I didn't want to even have to think about toys. So getting the Love Every Play Kits made our lives very simple. And those were basically the only toys we got the first year. This kept everything really limited and it was really easy to create a system that worked for us. As the holidays and my daughter's first birthday approach because we hadn't really asked for toys we felt comfortable asking for larger splurge items controlling the flow of gifts and having that boundary set really strong from the get-go made it 
much simpler. And yes, that meant even asking people to return stuff who didn't listen to our boundary, which was uncomfortable, but it communicated to everybody else that we were not playing around and we were not gonna cave in. Anyway, how to implement a toy rotation. It's pretty easy to implement. You'll want some sort of display bench or shelf. Any option like this works well. You want something that is safe, obviously for a baby or toddler, but you also want something that is their size and height that they can access without the help of an adult. As far as when should you rotate your toys, generally every seven to 12 days seems to be what works best for most families. During that rotation day, some parents choose to rotate everything out at that time, while others will choose to just rotate out the items their child has not been engaging with over the last few days or over the last week. If you're wondering how many toys you should have out, that's gonna vary based off of your child's age and the setup of your playroom and how many playroom areas you have around your house. Generally, I'd say between five and 12 is a good place to start, starting with less toys toys, the younger your child is. Really the big key is to make sure everything is presented in an organized and non-overwhelming manner. And I know this tip is going to sound counterproductive, but if your kid is not engaging with the toys out, try taking more away. So if you start off with 10 toys, they're not touching anything, cut it back to eight until you find their sweet spot. It does work in my experience. Of course, there are totally exceptions to this rule, especially if your child has been used to having access to all of their toys. It can be quite a shock to their system to go from like 50 toys to five. <laughs> well, give your kid some grace and understand that there's going to be a learning period. Only you are in your home and know what's best for you and your child and your family. Follow their lead, play with it, find your sweet spot. When my daughter was under one years old, we really only kept three to five toys out her play area in our house. Once she turned one, we bumped that number up to between like five and seven. And now that she's two, if you guys saw our playroom tour, we have out anywhere from five to 10 items in our playroom, but we also have access to activities at all times, like her crayons or her chalkboard or her music instruments. I don't count those in the toys I have out. I strictly count the toys on the shelf as out. The other thing I try to do is if one toy can work with other items on her play shelf, I will go ahead and try to group them together. So for instance, we have this way scale from Love Every and I added in a KiwiCo puzzle next to it. So that way when she drops the different puzzle pieces in, she can see that they weigh different amounts. My general rule of thumb for rotating out toys is if she touched it at any point in the last week, even if it was only for five minutes, it stays on the shelf. Increases her boredom with the items, which I don't shy away from because that's what's gonna foster creativity. I really always have believed with raising babies and toddlers keep them as bored as possible you can go ahead and create an experiment and just take in life without being overstimulated in a Montessori classroom actual materials that dr. Montessori created are always in the classroom and the reason for that is is that she believed in repeat exposure so that children could really go deeper into their play and finding ways to both use the item as intended but being creative with more of an open-ended play that's why I leave toys in the room even if she hasn't played with them every single day as far as how or when to rotate your toys, when they're babies and even young toddlers, you can just rotate them during nap time or while bedtime when they're just not around. Where they don't know where your toy storage is, but eventually they will learn where the toy storage is, at which point it becomes slightly more challenging. Even if you rotate the toys when they're not around, they can still go or ask to go to where the toys are stored and ask for specific items. From there, there's a couple ways to handle it. You can either give them access to whatever it is they're asking for or you can go ahead and talk to them about how we're not using those toys right now. Instead, we're using the ones that are currently out. Personally, our toy rotation storage has changed a lot over the last couple years. We live in South Florida. We do not have a basement. Our house is older, which means small closets, minus our closet. All of our furniture is low, so we don't have like under the bed storage or under the couch storage or anything like that. But our house like having big rooms make things work for a small space. If you saw my pregnancy announcement video, you got a peek into our, what used to be our guest room. That room is now cleaned up and it's my office. In that room, you saw the hot mess toy storage. Basically, we had this plastic shelving unit that ended up bringing into our house and I just kept her toys there. 
that room because it was such a hot mess. It was both toy storage and storage for my work stuff. It was just always a mess. The door always stayed closed. So my daughter, even though she knew stuff was in there, rarely went in there. And that definitely worked for us. Then once I decided to clean that room out and make it my office, we started to set up my old office <laughs> as the nursery. And I had just gotten these two bookshelves I was planning to use for work storage, started to keep the toys there. The only problem is the shelves were completely open. She would see them and for some reason maybe because that room was not like a closet just vomited all over every square inch of it it's a much more calming room she would often go in there pull down all the books pull out all the toys and she would want everything visible storage in a clean room did not work for us finally emptied some small storage bins that were in our master closet and i started to organize our toys into the, here basically i pulled out all of our toys one afternoon and i started to group them by like items so in one storage bin we have more baby tailored items in another storage item we have more like loose parts and materials so pipe cleaners straws sponges random Dollar Tree finds, all sorts of random kind of sensory stuff or activity surplus items, if you will. And then the other two small bins are our Love Every and KiwiCo items. Once she realized her toys were in our closet, eventually she did look up and she noticed them she did start to ask for them at that point if we were staying in my room for a little while and I didn't want her to watch tv I would just go ahead take down one of the bins open up the lid and let her go crazy with it in my room what I found though is because the items weren't presented in an organized way that she was used to everything was just kind of cluttered and piled into the box and within a couple weeks or a few weeks of giving her full access to those bins she became very disinterested in them. In my personal experience with my daughter, we trust that she knows her own limits. So by giving her free reign access to those toys in a limited or controlled environment, she got over them and disinterested in them very, very quickly. I have found that if she does want to take a toy out and play with it consistently, I'll say, okay, let's go choose one that we're going to put in this box so there's a space for it. Works for us in our house. Which I guess leads me to, how do you know what toys to rotate in? There's a few different options for this. Number one, if you're super type A, no judgment, you can use a toy rotation chart. Spreadsheet of all of the toys and items that your child has, and you can just go ahead and date it that way you can keep track of when the last time that item was out and the next part is just intuition which is primarily what I did the first year year and a half two years I would just randomly choose items that I felt like choosing my personal favorite as kids get older is inviting the child into toy rotation you want to pull out this toy which toys do we want to put away because there's only so much room out there we do this pretty loosey-goosey in our house so if my child asks for something I kind of just follow her lead but you can also make this more structured if that works better for you. You could have a calendar up on your family refrigerator you mark on that calendar that this is toy rotation day. So they have a visual cue for what day you guys are going to go ahead and rotate out the toys. Once it's time to go ahead and rotate those toys, I personally would bring all of the toy storage bins into the playroom and let them select what it is they want to pull out. They can go ahead and put the items away and this gives them a lot of practical life skills at the same time. They're learning how to store different things. They're learning how to rotate things just like we do during different seasons it gives them an opportunity to learn how to work with a storage system themselves and then lastly you can always break the toys down into categories and this way you can ensure that whatever is out for your child at all times is meeting them on whatever developmental milestones they're currently working on so for babies and toddlers that really has to do with fine and gross motor skills as kids get older you can use those Montessori categories that we talked about in the Montessori playroom video if you do like the spreadsheet type of thing and you want to even refine that a little bit more, use categories within that spreadsheet. If you don't want to use a spreadsheet, you can kind of just keep a mental checklist so that you can do a visual scan of the items 
currently being offered to your kid and keep those in mind while rotating out different toys. Our entire house is a yes zone. We keep stuff for our daughter in our entire house and this makes our lives easier. When she was a baby and we first moved in here, we were always in our living room, family room. And in there, we usually kept three toys, maybe up to five. We had our Love Every Play Gym and then like two other things for her to play with in there. To this day, there's a few books, there's a puzzle. We have a couple of different things for her in there at all times and she has always been able to access those on her own. The next little area we have set up is our bedroom. I am not a morning person. Um, I am somebody who needs to sit in bed for at least an hour after I wake up every single day. Generally what that has meant because my daughter was nursing is that it was very simple. She would wake up, she would come into our bedroom, I would nurse her, we'd read some books, we'd hang out. She adapted to my lifestyle. As she's gotten older, she pretty much has still done that. She doesn't nurse as often anymore. She usually just comes in bed and cuddles with me or reads books with me while I drink my coffee. We stare out at the window. Fortunately, she has adapted to as well. With that said though, she is a toddler and like that's not always perfect. If my husband's in the room and he and I are talking and she wants attention, she doesn't really love that. So in my nightstand, I keep a few books for her and I also keep two to three Love Every toys and they work really well if I need to pull something out quickly or if she wants to just pull them out while I hang out and lay there and just stare out the window and wake up for the day. Now with that all said too, Love Every also offers some bigger items that don't fit in those storage bins I showed you from our closet. It. What we do with those items is we rotate them around our different play areas. My daughter's room is really just for sleeping, but with rearranging our toy storage situation, I did end up putting a handful of books in her room, a few puzzles, and like two to three toys in there. So usually one of the larger Love Every items is always in my daughter's room. We have one of the larger Love Every items always in the nursery, and then we'll either put one in her playroom or in our living room. We're just rotating the larger ones that don't fit into our bin storage amongst the play areas of our house. Which I guess also I should talk about where we keep all of our puzzles. We keep a few in my daughter's room, we keep a few in this basket in the nursery, and then we keep a few in our under bay window storage in our living room. Puzzles have been the bane of my existence. I have tried that hack where like you sit them all upright on a rack. It didn't work. The puzzle pieces would fall out when I'd go to slide it out. It was a nightmare. This has been what's worked best for us. As far as rotating our toys, amongst the multiple play areas. I have found that it naturally just happens. I don't stress about it. All of those previous strategies can totally work. Instead, it's more so if my daughter ended up bringing an item into our living room and she kept bringing it in there, I would just end up switching it out with something else. Don't really focus on rotating the toys in these multiple playroom areas. When I'm taking a toy out, if I get an intuitive hit, oh, you should put this into your nightstand, then I'll go ahead and do it at that time. In my how to get your child to play independently video, you saw she pulled the crawling tunnel from her playroom into her bedroom. Again, I follow the child. If she's pulling an item into a different area of the house, I will just go ahead, use the exact same strategy as I talked about before and say, okay, we're gonna leave this in here for now. Which item do you wanna go put in the other room? Every item still has a place. It's just that the items are changing. She understands to put things back where she found them or find a spot for them in the new room. Kids are pretty smart. I don't think they get confused <laughs> that toys still need to go away and get picked up off the floor if that's what we're always modeling for them. They don't need to say like, okay, the crawling tunnel can only be in this one spot of the house at all times. And if they forget where they left something, like that's a lesson and responsibility for them that they're gonna learn. Natural consequences per Dr. Montessori's philosophy. And then the last big question is how do you handle toy rotation for books. In my Montessori Playroom video, I had all of the books out at that point and I ended up not leaving it like that because I was finding that I had to clean books up like multiple times a day. I went from really never having to clean up too much after my child to constantly feeling like I was cleaning up after her. We stopped giving her full access to all of her books at that time. I ended up buying this little $30 magazine rack bookshelf where the books are forward facing. Again, we just rotate the books just like we do the toys across multiple areas 
areas of our house. So there's some in my nightstand, there's some in the living room, there's some in the playroom, there's some in her room, there's some in the nursery. To that end, she does have access to all of them, but we really try to keep the amount of books we actually own limited. We go to the library. And those are all my toy storage tips. Make sure to hit that notification and subscribe button so you don't miss more videos like this in our realistic How We Montessori at Home series. In the meantime, feel free to go ahead, check out past videos from this series, check out those Love Every Play Kit reviews. And if you guys have any questions at all, my name is Rachel. Feel free to hit me up on Instagram at the Confused Millennial. Have a good one.